So let us start by setting up the environment as, as they, today, uh, who was listening to the other presentations, heard quite a lot about innovation and disruption, creativity, how the, the question is how to teach creativity, and we saw even some methods and methodologies how to do that, okay? And the issue is that we live in the time of digital revolution. And, and now we, we, we can discuss that. There are some people who don't think that that's a revolution, but all of the signs are that we are living in a time of digital revolution. And just my personal view is that we are on very beginning of this digital revolution. In reality, this what happened to us until today, okay, is nothing what will happen to us in next period. Based on that, uh, innovation and disruption is happening around us all the time. All the disruption, you know, all disruption, this is like IBM has laboratory which is worth billion of dollars and they had to invest a billion of dollars. They have all of the best scientists in the world and they then discuss and they try to innovate and to make some disruption uh, innovation. And that happens soon or not so, so soon. That happens from time to time. It's very difficult to predict and it's huge investment and it's usually um, only the big companies can do that. The cost is huge of such an innovation and the power is good, but the thing is that with digital revolution, now we have 10 times, I would say even 100 times, 1,000 times more innovators because the cost of the entry barrier is very low and the power of this innovation is huge, is huge. And the issue there is that, of course, if you are Steve Jobs and you have fantastic creative idea and you do the innovation, that's one way to innovate. The other way to innovate based on the digital revolution is totally different. And my research and what I'm doing is, what I'm trying to show is that it is not so difficult to be, be creative in that side if, if under the assumption that you understand how to create value in digital world, in digital economy, in digital education, in digital whatever. When I'm saying digital, I mean both hybrid and digital. You know, the difference between industrial business model and digital business model is that for industrial business model, you have to invest a, a capital. So you, you invent something, you find a new product, then you have to invest the capital to create a factory. When you create the factory, then you have to find a distribution channel. Please. Distribution channel. When you find the distribution channel, you have to start production. You produce first the test production and then you ship it. And after that, you really send the real production to the channel and that it comes uh, to the consumer on the end. And the value is realized only when consumer buys these goods. And it's a linear model which goes step by step and it's supply driven. What does it mean supply driven? It is we try to produce as much as we can because the bigger the production is, it's cheaper. It's, we will beat the competition on the market. We will push it everywhere. Everybody has to buy it. Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola. And then you start drinking Coca-Cola. I, if you like it or not, it's a different question, but they produce enough, okay? So, but it's a linear business model. It's very late when we produce the real value out of it. In digital business model, of course, the data are the main asset, but not only the data. So we have to collect uh, data. From data, we produce information, okay? Uh, I give you an example. You are sitting here, if I would give you the geolocation of this place, my presentation will not be much better, right? And that will be not such a big information for you. You don't need that. So the, the value of the information is when I give you in the right context, the right data at the right time, that you can use it for something. So I know that all of you have uh, 
probably your yachts in the Adriatic Sea or somewhere in Canada <laughs> or somewhere Park too. Mr. Todd has two. Excellent. Probably one in Balaton or yes. So and there if you would be in the stormy weather uh, and all of your equipment does, doesn't work and somebody gives you the geolocation, it would be of high value for you. You survive based on this. So the same information has different value depending on the context. And the whole point is, the whole knowledge of understanding digital is how to create this value. How you can use, how you can collect some data and out of it create the value. Data can be the basic, pro, uh, the basic asset and resource or it can be collected from the processes or famous example is there is a Dodo pizza. You know, the, what, what can be so fascinated in producing pizza? No, not really uh, something special. But Dodo Pizza uses real-time data, so every second they know how many pizzas are sold, which type, with which filling, with is it a paprika on top of it or not. And, uh, and they, based on that, artificial intelligence is ordering the supplies, and they are planning the production, and based on that, and they are very efficient. So it's... Terribly simple, but data are used at the right time with the value, and based on that, the value is produced. There is a total automation, real-time total automation. This is ideal, of course, it's not easy to achieve, but that's another way of doing this. So if you have digital education, you know exactly in each second how many people are in which of the courses, uh, which module is used, which module is not used. And all of this is then managed with algorithms or as they call it, artificial intelligence. Okay, artificial intelligence is actually based on models and algorithms, so uh, except if you are using them for the war or uh, robots that will kill you for the, at, at the moment they are not dangerous for the other things. Mm -hmm. And the last, uh, the, the, the next thing is it's demand driven. So it's important how many people are using it and how they use it. I give you an example. You know, everybody is saying customers are in the center, clients are in the center of, in digital economy. Uh, but in industrial economy, clients were not in the center. Okay? We put the company in the center and we look. All of the KPIs of the companies are actually not connected to the clients. But some of you were flying in, right? You were flying in. Who, who bought your ticket? Did you buy the ticket? Or somebody bought the ticket for you? I'm pedestrian. You are pedestrian. Uh, airplane <laughs> ticket? Car. Car, okay, good. Uh, travel agent. Travel agent, okay. Anybody else was flying, was buying a ticket himself? Yes, and I want to. So the point is you are buying the ticket. If you don't get enough proper information and value information, okay, you will decide for one or the other side. So you are deciding. So company still doesn't like, they don't like clients. Clients are only problem. They are making problems, always complaining and uh, doing all of this. But they are deciding now. And because they are deciding, they are in the center. We have to give them all of the information. We have to support them. We have to help them. We don't like it, but we do it because this is the center of digital economy. And... The, 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 the platforms are extended, extended digital ecosystem. You have to include much more people and much more things into the digital business model. There are to increase the value. And I will give you an example. Um, I looked a little bit. There is um, a modern school here in Serbia, which is half digital, the, which is hybrid and the, uh, the hybrid. And the, in that case, they have... Uh, um, high school and uh, grammar school and they are uh, advertising as important thing. Streber.com is the site where uh, they help the children to through the gaming and through different ways playing to learn much more. There is Duolingo which is the best way to learn the languages. There are universities level, university level education, Coursera, EDX, Udacity, there are hundreds and hundreds innovation which are for in the area of the digital education. The thing is most of them are focusing on very niche area. Right? 
And the point of innovating and doing something valuable in the digital economy and in the digital time is that you or we as a society, we don't have all of the information or all of the models do not exist. The laws are not adjusted to digital. The, uh, the regulations are not adjusted to digital yet. We are slowly adjusting them. So how we can innovate? By copying the other industry branches. You don't have to look only in the education, but you can look in the other sides. So I will give you one example. Yesterday when I landed in Belgrade at Belgrade Airport, I, I, w I have seen Kinyi, um, probably not a, a good pronunciation, uh, the company that is uh, distributing the plane was from Kinyi. It's a company that distributes from Alibaba the goods around uh, the world. Yeah. And Alibaba is very good example. I love you, give you example which will I give you the feeling how that works. You know, Alibaba was platform where they combine selling and buying. So they do nothing. Alibaba does nothing, just puts the platform where they will, the, the people who offer something and people who want to buy something come together. And they collected a lot of data and then they were selling quite a lot. And they had a problem in China, you don't have uh, too many credit cards. So how to pay with this? So they made a wallet and they made new company Alipay. And you put from your account something in your wallet which is on your mobile phone, and then you pay whatever you buy from Alibaba, you pay. And then they extended that that you can pay to anybody else, and then they extended it that you can pay in any physical shop. In 2018, in China, not only Alipay, but also the other companies, it was paid through this mobile phone 17 trillion dollars. The Chinese GDP is 12 trillion dollars. So more than the GDP in China. Okay? In the United States was paid less than 0.1% of that amount. And the reason, this is according to myself, why Trump is actually pushing the China is because they jumped over. They are doing this smart business. This costs almost nothing. It goes so fast and so easy that the whole economy can grow faster. And US is behind them, so now they have to get the, the harm. They have to harm them. Then what they realized is that by paying, they know how good you are. So they made the scoring system, how fast you pay, how, and they started selling the scoring system, and then they were also giving you the loans. This company that is giving the loans is giving three times more loans than the next bank on the list of top banks in China. Then they said, you left a small change in a wallet every time. Why don't you invest it? And they made the investment fund, monetary investment fund, and they used this data again in the right way with the value, and they created the biggest investment fund in the world. And now they are making the law to stop them growing because they are too big. To. And then they did insurance, and then they did this, and they did that. Okay? And one of the things that they sold is this company, which I told you, which is called Ki Ni, and which is the first smart business, really smart business company. What does that mean? They joined the forces, Alibaba joined the forces with eight other companies from logistic area made a joint venture, put in whatever additionally was necessary, and that was a software or algorithms that would manage all of this, so that in every moment you know where your parcel is, where your package is, you know also what is the best way to send your package, okay, and how to send it, and then they added 200 distribution centers which are all automated with the goal to ship in 24 hours anywhere in China any goods and to uh, ship in the world, anywhere in the world, in 72 hours that you would receive the goods. That's their goal. And now they announce that they will in this year uh, and the next year save additional $3 billion by just uh, adding and automating additional processes through the artificial intelligence. And the same thing is with the education. 
Education has to learn from that. When we say education, I'm thinking on, as they said, life. If somebody told you, what are you talented for in the very beginning, and somebody was ma managing your career path, you would have much better chance to become very successful. And if somebody would help you in that, you will maybe do not need retraining. Or, so it's much wider thing. And if you can collaborate and self-learn and decide on what do you want, which module, how do you want it, not to uh, go through the schedule which Ministry of Education prepared 20 years ago and are pushing you to go through that and through the normal pr process of education. And if that will be lifetime program with career planning program with and then, for instance, just employment agency. Employment agency is actually trying just to work with unemployed people. Okay, but in reality, employment agency has to work with us with our careers that we never become unemployed, if that's the goal. So they have to take and help you with your career that you go up, that you go left, that you go right, that you find the right job to move in the right place. And that's why I believe that there is a solution, which is, not with 10 minutes, it's, it's very simplified, yes, where education platform is much, much, much wider than what we think. The whole industry has to be included, which will include complete collaboration, creating communities with companies, with the people, with, with the di different way of creating open content, with connecting students, unemployed people, pupils, employees, companies, anybody, okay? On one side, as a consumers, and on the other side, government, companies, employment agencies, assessment agencies to assess, to tell you what, what are you talented for in order to help you to achieve that. Universities, management schools, all of the institutions to be included. This is just a small excerpt. So go really wide but make it open so that also the others can connect, and then you will create value, same like Alibaba created with Tini to change the whole industry, not to go, because we, we are, we are educated, we go look at our company, results of our company, how we will make our company, in a, it's not that question, it's a question how we will bring the value for us, employees, but also how we will bring the value for the society. And that's what I think it would help to create additional value in the new education, which is hybrid education. Thank you very much. <laughs>